So today we are going to glue the chocks to the plank using a very simple uh, and very reliable jig that I built like 10 years ago and I use this jig all the time I put chocks on the planks and uh, it's simple it's super cheap to build and gives me a precision level that I'm happy with so join me on the glue up process and see how I do this it's always a good idea to cover the parts that can get dirty with glue during gluing operation best with painter's tape and precise find the center of a chalk center line of a chalk I measure with calipers the distance between outside of the chalk and inner wall of the hole I zero the calipers and add half of the hole diameter in this case my hole diameter is uh, 10 millimeters so I add 5 millimeters and again I measure the other side zero calipers add 5 millimeters make a mark on the chalk and if I did this exercise correct then the two marks should overlap defining very precisely center line for the chalk and once I have this lines marked I use a square to draw draw thin line center line uh, across the whole surface of the chalk and I repeat the same operation for the other chalk. So now we start the process of fitting the chalk on, on the cheek and uh, important is that if for whatever reason the plank may be shorter than the, so the jig is set up jig is set up in a way that it reflects the maximum or allows maximum length of the plank and if the plank is shorter I usually put some space some spacers between uh, the, the jig wall and the inner wall of the chalk and that reduces the total distance and the, usually the, the game is about five to eight millimeters rarely more than one centimeter but anyway I try to more or less eyeball the center and clump the chalk with two clamps on both sides just slightly to fix it in place lock it in place and now the important part comes so aligning the chalk to the center line of the beam and both uh, arms aligning the center of a chalk with the center line of a, of a jig and for that for that I'm using uh, two squares and uh, I have two marks one on the chalk and one on the beam or one on the on the jig and they have to line up perfectly because this is this is a crucial element and the way I do it is I I run my square to touch the the mark on the on the jig and then I move move the the other square to touch the first square the bottom square and if the, the top square lines up with my pre-marked center line on the chalk then it's perfect in this case I'm about one millimeter off to the right so I have to give it a little blow to move the chalk to the left and re repeat the operation again so finding the center line right and sliding the the other square on top and just a hair back and this is basically how simple and precise you can set you can fix a chalk in the right position now it's perfect now it's perfect so I will just tighten 
tighten the clamps and the first chalk is fixed in its position. Okay, and the next step I will put my plank on the chocks to see what is the length of the plank and make make to make sure that I don't go beyond beyond the chalk line because uh, the chalk line with this setup represents the maximum length of the plank with some little uh, safety margin but anyway I want to line it up and make sure that the plank length is okay and if the plank is shorter I, I will at this point I will also determine what is the what is the missing part and how to plan uh, the alignment of a plank on the chocks because this is done only by eyeballing and there is nothing sophisticated in this so if I know that plank is 2-3 mils too short then I know that I need to have a uh, I need to have a I need to offset the plank to to compensate this uh, this uh, length difference and the maximum span so at this point I do the dry fit and I would also mark I would also mark when plank ends that will help me also to put to put a um, paint, painter's tape to protect to protect the chalk from being uh, from getting excess glue squeezed outside and leaving the leaving the chalk dirty because when it lands in the, at the paint booth these guys will hate me for that so I'm marking and I will marking the lines and uh, and uh, I will put the painter's tape around at the same time as you noticed I marked more or less when the chalk will be located and uh, this parts outside the chalk will also be covered with the painter's tape short masking which is not necessarily but I like my my uh, glue operation to be done in a nice and clear way so that I don't have to clean it and remove excess glue especially when it's cured so it's better to put a, put a, a little effort into preparing for glue operation and then enjoy the effect rather than going without any preps and then spend extra time on on cleaning cleaning the surface so I I fit tightly painter's tape so that glue doesn't go underneath the tape because then the protection effect is wasted okay and we are pretty much set for applying a glue we are ready with um, our chalk and plank for uh, bonding operation we have to apply an adhesive and uh, for that I will use an MMA adhesive I will I will give you more details later on uh, the important thing is that these uh, this adhesive has six minutes open time and it needs around 30 to 45 minutes uh, to cure and cure in a way that you can dis disassemble the plank from the from the jig and uh, start the next glue up process so it's really really fast but you also need a proper preparation to fit within the six minutes and uh, you can use basically a manual gun to squeeze this adhesive or you can use a, pneum a pneumatic gun and uh, look at this boy this is really bad boy and it helps a lot to get the adhesive out of the out of the uh, cartridge it to to mix uh, the activator the blue color activator with uh, with um, adhesive 
you need a static mixer and this is where the mixing mixing is done so I will touch a static mi mixer and start application I will apply some of the material on the chalk ah, look at this this is beautiful this is so convenient to have this pneumatic gun and we do the same on the chalk This is the first year of the first season I'm using this gun. I'm so happy with this. So I will do the, the other side and come back. Okay, the other side is ready for connection and now I have to spread evenly, try to evenly spread the adhesive on the plank. This six minutes is relatively short time but if you are well prepared this should be okay so as you see I run along the groove grooves so that that helps not to trap the air between the adhesives and the grooves so that's important and also remember that you don't have much time to clean up your tools if you make them dirty. Next step is to put the plank on the on the chocks. Right. Okay. So I have a line. I have a line right here on the plank and I have a center line, center line on the plank, center line on the chalk, and both lines need to be exactly create a one solid line so this is how i'm going to position my plank soon and uh, yeah come back to you in a minute as you see i have my plank clamped to the beam and i put i put a simple ruler on the bottom and try to squeeze to push or press the plank down by 60 millimeters so six centimeters and uh, then it pretty much simulates uh, the bend during sailing so in this position i know that the chocks chocks and runner blade will be perpendicular to the ice surface and uh, now it's time for making sure that uh, that the two lines two lines here are overlapping right there this is what i showed you before The other side of the plank is good, this side of the plank is good and now I will remove the excess glue so that when, when the glue sets, the adhesive sets, there will be no real cleaning, cleaning action needed and all will look nice and clean we will see the results very soon so this way with this adhesive I can run four five glue up operations a day once you are done done with cleaning you have to also take care of take take care of your cartridge. So the static mixer is a is a one-time use mixer. You have to throw it away after you use it because then the the adhesive cures inside the mixer. But in my case, that's the end of the story. The next plank will be will be on the on the jig in about an hour from now. And before glue starts to set, I need to remove all the painter's tape from every component and that will leave the element 
clean, nice and clean. And when my painting Maestro will see how nice and clean the glue up is, then he's super happy that he will have a limited amount of work when preparing the chalk. So this is nice and clean work done perfectly. I've also forgotten to mention that with this adhesive, if you apply the adhesive and fit both parts together, you must not touch it after 10 minutes because the chemical networking starts immediately. The open time for this adhesive, as I mentioned, is six minutes. So after 10 minutes, if you want to relocate, reposition your plank relative to, to the chalk, then you will break a networking and you will risk that there will be limited adhesion and, me and mechanical properties. So make sure that you, you prepared everything in a way that you can fit within the six but no more than, than 10 minutes time frame and uh, the higher ambient temperature the shorter the time is so this uh, six minutes is in uh, like 22 or 25 degrees uh, room temperature and if you go in a warmer place then this time might be even shorter so Keep it in mind that after 10 minutes, there is no chance you can move the part left or right. But uh, it took us around uh, five minutes, the whole operation, with moving camera left and right and playing with lights and uh, finding angles. So I think it's doable within four minutes uh, if you get used to the process. And of course, it's not that comfortable time-wise as working with epoxy, but at the same time, uh, you get the uh, plank ready after one hour easily you can uh, start fixing fixing the uh, chalk uh, to the plank with uh, bolts uh, after one hour that's a big advantage about an hour is gone and uh, i think it's time to remove the plank from the jig and see and see what will be the final result so we remove Clamps on both sides. That's pretty easy. I already did it from the other side, and now we have to remove the uh, clamp in the center. We can see here. Well, process is completed. Yeah. The adhesive that I have used is, uh, is a plexus adhesive. It's MMA, so uh, MMA stand, stands for methyl metacrylate. And uh, the big difference between this adhesive and epoxy is that mechanical properties are more or less the same or even in favor of uh, MMA glue but uh, the, the, the game changer is elongation and break uh, with uh, filled epoxy your elongation and break will be around 1.5 to 2 percent and with MMA elongation and break is 130 percent with this particular type of adhesive it's MA420 and this is two components, the blue one is activator, the white one is uh, adhesive and they are fitted inside one cartridge, so there are two tubes inside one cartridge and for, for this cartridge, uh, 380 millimeters, you can, with this cartridge you can bond at least four runner planks and uh, I did four and there is uh, like 10% left in the cartridge, so four and a half plank out of one cartridge 
very short uh, open time, six minutes. So you have to really hurry and be prepared before you start mixing activator with the glue. It's 10 to one. So 10, uh, 10 units of uh, adhesive mixed with one unit of uh, activator. And uh, I showed you, I showed you the, the static mixer. And I also showed you a very comfortable pneumatic gun to squeeze, squeeze uh, and mix uh, adhesive uh, out of the cartridge. This is super comfortable. I use it for the first time uh, this year and that's very helpful, especially if you have more than one plant. But uh, you can do just fine with a manual applicator, manual gun and just regular like squeezing silicone out of the tube. This one is more robust and bigger because the diameter of the of the plexus cartridge is, is bigger than the regular silicon diameter so we have to uh, look for a uh, ded dedicated gun but it works fine it, it can handle uh, multiple application as well very robust and uh, very cheap and uh, another thing is that MMA adhesive does not require uh, to prime the surface. So as you probably notice, I did not even touch the surface of the chalk and it has built in uh, primers. And that means that you apply it on the aluminum without priming, sanding, same with, uh, with laminate on the chalk. It's not necessarily that you have to sand it before application, before gluing. It's enough to apply the glue and the chemicals inside the glue will do the job. So that makes your life even easier. Here is the little brother of MA420. It's called MA300. It's one to one uh, uh, mixing, and I use this one for all other all other apl applications about the same uh, uh, pot life of this uh, adhesive. But the difference is that the elongation and break in this case is similar to epoxy around three to five percent it's thickened so it uh, you can apply it on the vertical walls and it will not run down and uh, it's all around all general purpose adhesive so ma 350 mil cartridge you can you can apply it or squeeze it just with two fingers if necessary uh, that's that's fine as well for emergency reparations uh, and fixes especially when you are out uh, in hotel and you need to fix something and you need some adhesive that sets very quickly so this this would be a perfect this would be a perfect solution for every ice sailor to have one cartridge in a in a bag just in case you need to to glue uh, especially metal laminate uh, uh, any acrylic uh, surfaces, uh, stainless steel. Um, it's not the best choice for wood. I would not recommend it for wood, but but any other substrate than, than wood would be fine. The static, static mixer I just mentioned, it's important to know that the adhesive that comes out of the nozzle has to be blue. If it comes out white, or slightly blue it means that the activator outlet is blocked and you have to you know just check if if the flow of activator is uh, free and uh, when it's coming blue you saw it on the movie before uh, when i applied the glue means that it's well mixed activator and uh, adhesive are well mixed together and after using you just dispose this uh, um, because it's so fast and reactive, it you you will feel it's getting it getting warm with your hand, meaning that uh, the mixture is the the, the mixing is uh, properly done inside the mixer. But also, it will be indication that uh, your adhesive starts really to set, and it will be ready soon to uh, disassemble uh, your plank and chocks from the jig. So. Yeah, this is like 50 cents a cartridge uh, and a mixer and about uh, I think 35 40 euros per cartridge of plexus so it's pretty affordable and the gun is just a few euros so all in all 
and it makes a great combination for um, not only fast uh, operation but also very durable imagine 130 percent elongation at break so imagine in real life that when your uh, field epoxy elongation at break is at the level of around two percent optimistically then if you expose your chalk to uh, abnormal force like you ran into a crack then after you finish your sailing day you may observe a little cracks on your joint between chalk and plank meaning that probably there is a chance that epoxy that the joint has has broke at, at some point and that that may be the beginning of of a replacement process but uh, when you use high elongation and break adhesive like like I do then this adhesive and the joint can withstand significantly higher forces before it breaks basically the mechanical connection by screws will break before the, the glue joint uh, breaks so it's really reliable the one big drawback of this uh, configuration using plexus is that when you want to remove the chocks that's really difficult operation and that could be a top topic for a separate uh, movie by the way i have i have one uh, i have one set of chocks to remove from broken plank uh, from last year's crash and maybe i will make a movie about how i handle this difficult operation of removing uh, removing chalk from the plank that is uh, glued with plexus adhesive that will be a challenge yeah definitely with epoxy it's just enough to heat it up to around 100 110 celsius degrees maybe a bit higher and knock with the hammer uh, if you have skills to do this uh, uh, gently knock with the hammer and uh, the chalk will pop out by itself um, and it's not going to work this way with plexus definitely not but uh, this is the this is the price you have to pay for this 130 elongation and break yeah hope you like this and uh, if there are any questions just let me know in the comments see you soon in the next movie oh and did i mention smell of mma adhesive um, some say it's terrible probably your wife, your wife would say that if you are doing this in your shop down down in the basement uh, some love it but basically it's very intensive smell of uh, acrylic acrylic so you can imagine that your room fills with acrylic smell immediately and it goes all around the place so keep it in mind that using MMA adhesive will also let your let everybody around you know that you are using MMA adhesive and when I'm saying that MMA adhesive is far better than epoxy I know what I'm saying because I have a lot of experience with knocking chocks off the plank while sailing <laughs>